Continuing our reading in Aerith, Poppy and Aerith by Avi. Today is chapter 22. Aerith looks at himself. Aerith crouched in the deepest, darkest part of his hollow log. Now and again he gnawed noisily on an old dry twig. Finding it tasteless, he stopped often, only to start again when he could think of nothing else to do. Uh, uh, I suppose it has to be me who plans Poppy's funeral, he grumbled. Nobody else offered. Nobody else could. How oh, typical. Uh, they leave everything to me. What would Dimwood Forest be without me? Trees! The porcupine closed his eyes, shifted his prickly bulk, and twitched his tail until his quills rattled. Uh, what's important, he declared, is, is that it be a, a dignified funeral. Uh, all about Poppy, so everyone will learn what a wonderful creature she was. Nobody like her in the whole forest. No one, not even me. He closed his eyes and tried to remember how. It seemed so long ago he had first met Poppy. Ah, yes, it was a fox named Bounder who had chased her into his log. <clears throat> oh, funny how that happened, Aerith mused. Silly mouse. Oh, Poppy thought I was going to eat her, as if I'd eat meat. Yuck! Meat is disgusting. Then Era thought about all the things he should have said to Poppy when she was alive. Oh, there, there never was any time, he whispered. How, how could I say the things I should have said if she didn't let me say them? Uh, she was always so busy. I, I never expected she would just fly off the way she did. Uh, not bothering to say goodbye, just poof, gone. Not very polite. The more Era thought about Poppy, the more agitated he became, until, unable to stay still, he heaved himself up and waddled out of his log. <clears throat> oh, I mustn't think about her anymore, he said. It's making me crazy. Anyway, it's about time I started to think of myself. Even so, he was unable to keep himself from trudging up to Poppy's snag, staring at it bleakly, shaking his head in dismay, and then turning to lumber into the woods. As Aerith went along, he grumbled about his aching muscles, bad food, the lack of salt in the air, which was hot, thick as glue, and just as sticky. He felt heavy and itchy. Surely this was the hottest day of all, so hot even the forest insects were silent. He was convinced that he was the only creature, the sole creature moving. For the only sound he heard were the only sounds he heard were his own footsteps on the parched grass. The sound scratchy and crunchy irritated him. Oh, with Poppy gone, nothing is good, he muttered. Uh, if I if I could, I, I'd march right out of this world, but well, where would I go? Aerith continued on, grumbling and grunting, not caring where he was going, knowing only that he was heading into the deep woods, away from his home, away from everyone. He reached a place where the trees grew so close together, even the air seemed to be made of shadows. He looked about. Nothing moved. Nothing stirred. I'm all alone, he whispered. Utterly alone. As he gazed forlornly about, he noticed a large boulder sticking out of the ground. On one side of it glistened, sprinkled almost. Curious, Aerith drew near and saw that embedded in the stone were pieces of a bright mica. He started to turn only to catch a glimpse of his reflection there. Aerith barely, rarely looked at himself. It happened only occasionally when he had to bend down to take a drink from a pond or a stream. In those moments, he did not like what he saw and quickly shut his eyes. This time he stared hard at the image of his face as if searching for something. <clears throat> you, he said, are not handsome. You are prickly, ugly, grumpy, not friendly. He gulped down a rasping breath and then suddenly bellowed, Arizion or Sodom, you are a self-centered and conceited porcupine. You should be ashamed of yourself. Feeling angry because of Boppy. Think how she feels being dead. Tears trickled down his blunt face. He shifted his head in various directions, all but crossing his eyes to see himself. Then he moved his body around, trying to get a glimpse of his whole self. If 
Finally, he pressed his flat nose against the mica so that his eyes stared into his own reflection. You, he said as if addressing a stranger, are a porcupine, an old porcupine, a very old porcupine, an antique porcupine, a prehistoric porcupine, a fossil porcupine. But, but what? He added, asked the image. Have you done with your long life? When no answer came from the stone, he supplied it himself. Not much, he said. Oh, have you ever, have you done anything good? He demanded. Did you build anything, solve any problems, make anyone happy, teach anyone anything? Oh, Arisai and Dorsodum, he shouted. You have done nothing with your life. He stood still, gazing at himself, panting with emotion. Oh, the only good thing you've done is love Poppy, he gasped. And now that she's gone, what do you intend to do with what's left of this empty life of yours? Just tell me out. Tell me that, Mr. Airmat, uh, Aerith Dorthesawal, uh, you, he said, accusing his image. Uh, we're going to learn to... To, to smile, like Poppy always did, fine. Uh, that'll be your farewell gift to her. From now on, you will smile like Poppy. Eris stepped back so he could see his whole face. Uh, did you hear me smile? Peering at the mica, he tried to smile, but the creature that looked back at him only grinned hideously. Oh, you look like a belching bug, he cried. You'll have to do better than that. He twitched his lips, first one way and then another. He pushed a paw into his mouth and pulled up one corner of his lips and then the other. Desperate, he snatched up a twig and stuck it in his mouth, pulled it out and up so as to create a smile. Oh, if Poppy were here, he cried. She could have taught you to smile. She would have done... It well, too. Well, uh, I'm not budging until I teach myself. The porcupine stood in front of his reflection, struggling to smile. At last he sighed. Oh, smiling is too hard. He yelled. I should have started a long time ago. And that's the end of chapter 22.